Hi, I'm Johnny Palmer from SXS, and we're doing a video here about different screen technologies. The idea of this is so that you can learn about all the different screen types, uh, what the pros and cons of each are, and how to manage the expectations of both yourself and clients when using these technologies for events. This part of the video is about projectors now. Um, up until quite recently, pretty much the staple of conference and presentation video. Things have changed a bit now. So I'm going to start by talking about projectors and then make comparisons to projectors to other technologies. So this here is a pretty modern, it's about six months old, Panasonic 7K projector. So that makes it 7,000 lumens. I'm not going to talk about lumens and lux and nits and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you'll see in a second what this projector does in terms of daylight. Uh, lumen, by the way, refers to brightness. Um, it's 1080p. Reasonably small box. A few years ago, a projector like this would have been twice the size. Um, six or seven years ago, it would have been about four times the size. They've got a lot smaller, a lot more affordable, and a lot lighter, and much easier to use. So um, projectors are measured in lumen. This is 7,000 lumens. The small projectors you might buy from an um, electronics consumer store might be 2,000 lumens. And the absolute biggest ones you can get at the moment are about 30,000, 40,000 lumens. But they're really specialist. Stuff that's generally available that we would use on quite a regular basis is about 20,000 lumens. So now I'm standing in front of the video projection screen, and this is a screen that projector I showed you is projecting onto. So this is an eight foot by six foot screen, and the image we're projecting is about two and a half meters by about a meter. Um, the room I'm standing in right now is our warehouse. It's daylight right now, sun's overhead, and we've got some ambient light spilling in. Now it's a pretty powerful projector, and you can probably see from looking at this, although the image is visible, it's quite washed out. Um, that is the number one reason why we're not using video screens now as much as we used to. Increasingly these days, clients expect to be able to do presentations in quite well-lit rooms. Um, and in a well-lit room, you're competing with ambient light against the projector the whole time. So this surface, it's designed to any light that hits it, to bounce it back so you can see it. Now that's exactly how a projector works. So the screen is indiscriminate between projector light versus ambient light. And that's why that's not black, that's white. And this is washed out. And this is a pretty good projector. So um, the brightness thing is a massive consideration for projectors and time and time again we've got clients asking for projection and they expect to be able to use them in a well-lit room. They just don't really work very well in that application. If we wanted to use a screen like this in a well-lit room, we'd want to put a 20,000 lumen projector on it. Now that's a big projector, pretty expensive, and it still wouldn't be a perfect image because black wouldn't be black. Black would be this kind of whitey grey colour. So they have their place but it's not for everywhere. Where projectors are absolutely perfect is in a dark um, room where the light levels are highly controlled. Think of cinema. Absolutely perfect. The image is stunning, but you've really got to have control of ambient light levels. Um, and increasingly these days, we're seeing that events venues um, just don't really give us that level of control. And frankly, people don't want to be in a dark room. You can't take notes. You can't see each other. And then you've got to light the presenter on the stage anyway. So I personally feel that presentations and conferences are moving much more towards well-lit, um, fresher event spaces where you're not plunged into darkness to watch a presentation. Um, now on the more technical side with projectors, there's also the lens consideration. Every projector lens has a specific angle that it projects out on, okay? So depending on the screen size and the projector distance, you've got to get a different type of lens. Now with the kind of stuff we use, there's about three, four, sometimes five different types of lenses. Each one needs to be designed, specced properly, installed right, you've got to focus it, symmetry. There's a lot of stuff to do with projectors. Um, and if on the day, for some reason, the event layout changes, um, you might not have the right lens with you, unless you bring a full pack, which again is costly. Um, so it's a lot less flexible using projectors as well. I'm not slagging them by any means, they definitely have their place, but these days they're not the first port of call for the conferences and exhibitions that we do. So that's video projection. Hopefully that kind of explains where they're strong and where they're weak, um, so you can make the best informed decision. This part of the video is about LED backlit LCD. What I'm standing next to here is an 84 inch screen of that type. And the way it works is behind the screen here, you've got a series of LEDs and they're transmitting light through an LCD panel so that you can see the light coming through. Um, very much, well, exactly the same as your mobile phone and your computer monitor as at the time of making this video, which is 2014. Um, that's distinctly different from the LED screen in that LED screens have individual red, green, blue LED pixels and you're seeing the actual LED, whereas this is transmitting the light through an LCD layer and that's what you're seeing. So this particular screen is 2K resolution. That's about twice what people refer to as high def these days. Um, so that's really high resolution. When I'm standing at this distance from it, um, if I'm looking hard, I can just see the pixels. 
Standing back about here, they're pretty much indistinguishable. So this kind of screen's really good for close-up digital signage, um, conferences, exhibitions, or for office presentations. Where it um, might be a bit limited is brightness. It looks really good in a room of this bright brightness level, which is kind of like a normal office. You could read a book in here comfortably, you can chat in here fine, it's okay. Um, but it would struggle a bit if it had direct sunlight on it. So this kind of screen's ideal for exhibitions, um, events, presentations but we wouldn't push it so much towards shop window displays where there's a risk of sunlight directly hitting it. Um, in terms of size, this is 84 inch, but there are screens that go slightly over 100 inch these days. But that's kind of size and bigger. We'd normally encourage clients to go for an LED wall rather than an LCD um, backlit screen like this one. Right now I'm standing in front of two LED backlit LCD screens. Elsewhere in this video, we talk about an um, 84-inch version. That's essentially the same screen, but much larger. Um, so to recap on that, you've got an LCD screen with LED lights behind it, and that transmits the lights through the LCD so you can see the screen. Now, what makes this setup different is that we've actually got two screens butted up next to each other. Um, we would call this an LCD wall. Some people might refer to it as a plasma wall, um, incorrectly, but same kind of thing. Now, if you look, there's bezels on these screens. These bezels, as far as they go, are pretty thin, but you can still see a black line coming down the center. Um, that can be okay for large format signage. Sometimes that could even be a design feature for some projects. But the downside of that is that if you're showing technical content, you've got this thumping great big black line going through the screen and crossing that way as well. Um, so for conferences, we don't use this kind of stuff anymore because we feel that that black line can be a real problem for certain technical data. So if you imagine, for example, you were showing a graph or some financial data, or a technical drawing, whatever, that could be really distracting on your event. Um, we did used to use these quite a lot back in the day, and a lot of companies still do, but where we want to make a screen that's larger than one of these screens, these days we'd use our LED screen, which is an infinitely superior solution, and on pretty much every front is better than this. Um, what is good about this, though, is that each screen here has got 1080p resolution. So, when you stack up four of these, you've got four times high def resolution. For the size of area that is, that resolution is like off the scale good, like really, really high. But once again, you've got this black line. So depending on the project, you might decide that high resolution is okay, but you've got to do the black line. Or you might say, well, you know, I don't like the black line, even if the resolution is great. So like with any solution, neither is better or worse. They've all got their application. Um, and I would say for digital signage at exhibitions, this is actually really, really good. The other thing is these are extremely light screens, um, whereas LED is not. It gets very heavy when you start building it up. Um, so I hope that's a good summary of LED backlit LCD in an LCD wall configuration, also known as a plasma wall. The screen I'm standing in front of now is our new LED video wall. Um, this is a solution to a lot of the problems that typical video equipment um, has. So I'll go through the key ones of those. For a start, this system is completely scalable. This screen behind me right now is made up of 18 individual panels. Each one's about 48 centimeters by 48 centimeters. And we can stack them up and make whatever size, shape of screen that we want. So it's really, really scalable. Um, up, to, um, up to 50 square meters, we have over 220 panels. So that there is less than one tenth of the amount of screen that we own. So it's a really, really big system. The other one is brightness. Um, You'll see in other parts of this video how I talk about the brightness challenges of things like video projection and plasmas. With this particular system, it is very, very bright. Right now, I'm standing in a warehouse where we've got sunlight overhead as well as some bright fluorescent lighting overhead here. And this screen is still punching through. It's a very, very prominent screen. And even in high ambient light levels, unlike projection, blacks are black. If we turn the screen off now, where there's no light, it is actually black. So the contrast and the perceived contrast is really good. So the way this screen works is, um, each pixel, which you can't distinguish on this video and look, unless you look really, really close, is made up of three LEDs, a red one, a green one, and a blue one. And by the levels of each changing, you can get pretty much any color. So it's made up of a series of direct light sources. Whereas the LED backlit LCD screens, the light shines through a surface and then it emanates. So with this, you're seeing the actual direct light source. As you can see as well, there's no joins in this screen. So the bigger it goes, you don't start getting joins and gaps. Um, and also, in terms of its usability, we can use it in environments where we've got very high ambient light levels, even direct sunlight, it's still visible, although it does wash out a little bit. So on most fronts, this, this system is, um, is the best we've got. We've got a separate video on this um, screen as well. If you want to see that, send me an email and I'll send you a link to it. 
Okay, thanks for watching these videos. I hope they've been helpful to you in learning all the different types of video screen technology. In particular, I hope they help you and your client understand um, what these things are and what you're buying into. Um, it's so important with these things that you understand the pros and cons of each system so expectations are managed in your project. Um, if there's any other videos you'd like me to do on any subjects, please get in contact. I'd be really happy to help out. And thanks for watching.